Hello there, everyone. Welcome to the What Culture Game podcast. I'm Ben Rory, and I'm not Scott. Do you know why Scott's not here? Because he didn't invite me onto the podcast last week, so I screwed his <laughs> in it up. So, screw him. <laughs> Scott, get asleep. Anyway, it is September now somehow. How is it September? Does that even mean anything anymore? Who knows? We've just had a bank holiday as well. You people in America or around the world don't know what that is. But over here in England, the UK, just another part of the country or part of the world, who cares what it's called? The banks go to sleep and that means we all get an extra day off. And I had an extra day as well, so it's been four days. So we're all very tired. Anyway, long intro out of the way. Welcome to the podcast. I'm joined today by Josh. All right, Ben Roy. <laughs> And also Ash. Hello, are you all right, Ben Roy? Very tired. I'm very sorry for that long intro. I, half the people are probably already turning this off because they're like, I can't be dealing with this. Uh, but today, uh, I just want to find out how you two have been over this sleepy holiday of the banks where they all went to sleep. Well, essentially just sleeping, Ben Roy, you know what I mean? I'm, I'm glad that you finally explained what a bank holiday is to everyone. And yeah, I, I didn't like, know that, you know. I was I, like, yeah. oh, I just thought it was called the bank holiday. Did you even realise? Over here, the banks are sentient, so they need to actually be put to sleep every now and then, always. they just get cranky and investor rates go down. Exactly. Dude, you can't say anyone listens to the What Called You and podcast and now doesn't get straight hard facts. We just spitball the facts every single day. I've been good. I've, I've had a mostly gameless four-day weekend, I'm not going to lie. There hasn't been anything on my radar until the Avengers has just come out, which I haven't played yet. But now I feel like video games are about to start up properly again, which I'm looking forward to. How about you, uh, Ash? For me, I, uh, I've just discovered, right, I know this is late, I know this is late to the party, but I've just discovered Spider-Man, uh, the PS4 games. So, like, I've, I've seen a little Marvel's talk flying around. I was like, well, it's probably time I played this like properly. I had the big dip into Spider-Man because I'd seen it so much. I've seen everyone talk about it. It's in all the fun things that it has to offer. And like, I think I dabbled on someone else's game for a little bit, like doing some crime. And I was like, oh, that's okay. And then like got into it myself, was like, this is all I will ever play ever again. <laughs> like, it's so good. It is so good. I feel like I've missed out for like two years now. You have, but how did you just completely ignore Spider-Man? The Spider-Man. I did not ignore, I dabbled and then did not realize, <laughs> the, I did not realize the potential because I was like, oh yeah, I'm not, I'm not that big. And it's cool, I guess this is really fun for people who love comics. And I got into it, I was like, I love comics, I love Spider-Man, like, this is for me! Well, it sounds like you've had a better weekend than me, because all I've done is play Battletoads and wondered why I even existed. Why did I book that extra day off? Why did I not just <laughs> join the banks and sleep? Because it was a mediocre broader at best, then they got some Geometry Wars stuff going on, which was terrible and then just rock paper scissors and then just this sledding game where it just fell apart towards the end it feels like they ran out of money but no one needs to care about that because we're not looking into the past anymore today <laughs> we're looking into the future and what's going for the rest of 2020 and what better way to do this than by you know talking about the rest of 2020 and me wearing a wwe 2k 20 t-shirt anyway first off i have got Wikipedia up, you know, the website that tells you all the games that are coming out for the rest Never of the year. Never heard of it, actually. Yeah. Nah, man, what's that? It got me through my GCSEs, this website as well. It's the website you should trust. And the website, if you, if you don't know what's going on, just do a bit of copy and paste in. Anyway, first up going on here. That no! I, don't do that. <laughs> that well, just, just, you know, change some of the words around. Anyway, the no. first thing I can Penroy, see no! <laughs> is um, Marvel's Avengers, which I don't know, does anyone want, here want to talk about that? That comes out on the 4th, or shall we just skip straight over? Uh, yeah, I don't know if I can talk about this anymore until I've played it properly. I feel like I've exhausted my beta thoughts, you know, from what I've played of it so far. I need to properly sink myself into the story, man. Like, I've got it now to play, uh, thankfully. And I'm really looking forward to seeing if there's a core there that I can really latch onto, but... Until then, I don't want to keep kind of crapping on it because I keep bringing it up in videos. You know, we're talking about um, Suicide yeah. Squad. We're talking about uh, Gotham Knights. And obviously the comparison right now is the other team-based superhero game, which is the Avengers. And I feel like I just, I just need to play a bit more. I need to look into it a little bit and give it a bit more of the benefit of a doubt, perhaps. But ultimately, uh, I, I don't want to talk about it until then because <laughs> I don't think I have anything interesting to say anymore. Yeah, I've heard so many like opinions about it at this point that I want to be able to craft my own on the real deal. Um, I'm looking forward to seeing what what it does, like specifically, you know what I mean? I feel like it needs its moment, it needs its chance to stand up for itself. So I'm just ready and waiting for it. I'm going to carry on with my Spider-Man, enjoy the joys of Spider-Man and, you know, welcome, a, welcome Avengers in when I'm in a good mindset for it. I'm like, oh, hello, what's this? 
I played five hours of the beta and will not be touching it until it is very cheap. So <laughs> that's all I have to say on this one, really. I mean, you've had your time crapping on there, Josh, but I've not. So I just think it, how it was, I think the story missions seemed pretty interested i enjoyed them for the most part and then when you got into let's do the missions with uh, we've changed the room order around but it's the same seven or eight rooms for each sort of random mission it just something like that didn't click with me and it feels like more game as a job rather than game as fun i totally get that you know what i mean that's that's the thing that i'm, I'm worried about the most and I'm, I'm trying my best to hold my final thoughts but yeah i wasn't impressed by the beta for that very reason and i feel like you know when they say you can play this solo which is how i usually play games because i, I don't like socializing after work because <laughs> i like to go yeah. to sleep with the bank um I, just, I don't know it felt very lonely it felt like playing through the division which you technically can play solo but it is a very kind of um, isolating experience. Yeah, you can because you literally can, but it's not necessarily designed that way, which is the issue. And I want to I want to see if the story kind of circumvents that a little bit. Or play of my friend who played as Iron Man, flew off, got lost, died, and then had to watch me as Black Widow saved the day. But um, next game that is coming out so was coming out the same day, Tony Hawk's Pro Skater 1 and 2. I don't know why... I'm not that educated in Tony Hawk's Pro Skater, so I don't know why Free wasn't in there as well. It just seems weird they didn't just do a trilogy, unless mm -hmm. Bobby Kotick wants to get another couple of million in his pocket. But I was wondering, any of you looking forward to this? I don't know, this is yours, man. Like, Oi. take it away. Take it Dude. away. I'm looking forward to this so much that like yesterday on my day off, I rented the Tony Hawk's um, like documentary. He's got a documentary about, about um, making the games because I'm looking forward to these remasters so much. Even though I, I was a bit too young for Tony Hawk's Pro Skater 1 and 2, I played them, but I really came into uh, like the franchise at around 3, 4 and Underground. So for me, it's kind of, they're, they're not the games that I'm, I'm most nostalgic for that I get remastered, but I know to many like they're the, the, the absolute peak of peak of Tony Hawk's and skateboarding games in general. So I just, I feel like Activision, you know, for all of their problems, they've done like a proper smashing job, a cracking job when it comes to um, remaking old games like Crash Spyro, you know, stuff like that. And I feel like after the disaster that was Tony Hawk's Pro Skater 5 and the remaster of um, the original Tony Hawk's Pro Skater, which they, they tried to do, like, I feel like yeah. this is, is the thing that they've, they finally done it properly, and I'm just hoping it lives up to expectations to get that sweet, sweet hit of nostalgia and have a good time. Because those games, like, they still hold up to this day. Like, the systems and the mechanics that are in there are so fun and so pick up and play, you know, enjoyable that I feel like I'm going to spend a lot of the weekend and a lot of the next few weeks absolutely smashing uh, these games out and listening to the soundtrack that's already in there. But then also making my own playlist on Spotify of the old Tony Hawk's games uh, soundtracks to put on in the background. I'm just, uh, honestly, I didn't expect to be looking forward to a Tony Hawk's game in 2020, but here we are. It's a but, gift, truly. It is the gift that is. keeps on giving. I'm looking forward to it. I'm very much looking forward to it. My favourite skating game is um, Spyro 3. So uh, <laughs> I, I'm looking forward to, like, you know, changing that opinion again. But no, Tony Hawk's always been a good one. It was kind of one that got, um, like, I'm the same as you, Josh, where it wasn't, like, the most nostalgic of my childhood, but it's one that I, like, dibbed in and out of had a little skate on it, but always preferred a Spyro 3 as my favorite skating game. Um, and or the, the Simpsons one, I swear there's a Simpsons skateboarding yeah, yeah, one. Um, yeah. uh, and that, that was the nonsense that I had. So I'm glad that it's come back again so it can be like, right, let's have a little go on this again. Let's return, let's have a nice time. The, um, I don't know if you ever had like these, where you, you two lived as kids, but like we had a play center near in our town and in that part, they had like a PlayStation there and I played Tony Hawk's on that. So I never really owned one of them. I just played them. But fun fact, Tony Hawk's HD, whatever it was in 360, first game I ever got a code for and got to do some stuff on that was like, that was when I was still in university all those many years ago. But I mean, I'm disappointing I, to be honest. Yeah, it was disappointing. You know, it probably set the, set the stage for what was to come in my life. But uh, we shall move on <laughs> to the next game on the list that I see is worthy of bringing up, which I keep forgetting about, which is coming out very soon. Splunky 2. Now, I don't know if any of you have ever played Splunky 2 or any other roguelikes, but it, the first one, hard as hell, really enjoyable. One of those games I almost enjoyed watching people play more than anything else, but I can't wait for this game. Any of you two interested or...? I like, I dabbled in the first and it's just like roguelikes, roguelites 
Uh, they're not necessarily... Oh, is it roguelikes? I don't know. You know, you know what I mean. It says what... rogue... On wikipedia.com, it says roguelike. So... <laughs> I, I, don't I thought so. I was uh, losing my mind a bit there. Yeah, I've never, I've never truly been able to get into those kind of games for whatever reason. I actually talked about it on um, a chat your faces quite recently because I, I, I love them in concept and I love them in theory, but almost like you said there, Ben Roy, I almost like watching them more than I like the act of um, playing them myself. Maybe because I'm so scared about like lost progress and making my time meaningful. For some reason, I don't associate that with kind of like this permadeath system or kind of like retracing your steps or trying new rooms and not having a set path. I don't know. But I could never get into the first game, even though I know it has this like massive, massive following and it's so well respected. So maybe Splunky Two is the one that gets me in. I think it's just the um, the idea of going into a cave and being like Mini Indiana Jones and maybe annoying the shopkeeper and then ruining the game and being chased for the whole thing. There was something about it that just I don't know why I think maybe the art style, maybe the whole minutia of just watching it, but that game got its hooks into me and I never, I was never able to finish it. I got so close so many times, but just the enjoyment of the enjoyment of the pain, I think it is for these sort of games, especially that one. I, I, I don't know. Uh, rogue likes, rogue likes, rogue, rogue one. They're all sort rogue of, one. they all sort of do, do it for me in a certain way, but not too much. Uh, next, uh, Crisis Remaster. That I mean, can a PS4 and Xbox One run Crisis? I don't know. Like, <laughs> this is this is the age-old question that we've all been waiting for since whenever Crisis first came out and melted that PC. Like, are any of you looking forward to this? Ash, uh, any interest in Crisis? No, it's like this. This is I don't know. I I wasn't big on the uh, the other Crisis games because I know it's a remaster, but like I, I can't say it's one that's in my back catalogue. So I'm probably not the best person to talk about Crisis. My my mind for 2020, honestly, I know we're going to get there, but all I'm thinking about, all I'm waiting for, is Cyberpunk. So as soon as <laughs> like as honestly, whenever we start this, I'm like, when are we getting to Cyberpunk, man? So I can't I can't say I can give you an honest opinion on Crisis because my mind is there. It's living there in 2077. <laughs> so Josh. Are you excited for Crisis? We, I'm like morbidly curious because it was supposed to come out actually, I think in August and they released a trailer for it and everyone thought they were kind of joking because it didn't look very good. Mm. So then they pushed it back and there was kind of like a fallout to it. So I'm interested to see whether or not it's actually going to hit because I want the Crisis series to like do well. I know um, like Crytek had a lot of troubles um, in the 2010s, but I do want to see kind of like, you know, the franchise come back because I really love two, especially. Obviously, I didn't have a PC that could run one, so I've barely played it. So I'm interested in it from a kind of, you know, outsider's perspective. But I wonder whether or not, I wonder whether it's going to be or hold up like all these years later. I wonder whether it's going to be this cutting edge kind of like revitalization of a classic that people want it to be because it didn't seem like that. Um, from the trailer, so I'm, 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 I, I don't know whether I'll get it. I'm, I'm, like I said, a bit morbidly curious about it, about it to see whether it like lands with a splash. It just kind of becomes one of those games where we do a podcast in three months' time and we go, oh crap! Remember when <laughs> Crisis Remastered came out? That was a thing, wasn't it? I'm, I just, I'm, I'm glad that it exists. Sorry, I'm just gonna jump back yeah. in. It's like I'm glad that it exists. I'm glad that it's there for people, but I'm not people. Is is my like bottom <laughs> line of it? I'm like, I'm glad that it's there. I'm glad that it's come back, and I love things returning, whatever. But yeah, I can't say that this one is is for me. The sounds that my PS4 make at the moment, I'm too scared to even attend this because <laughs> I need it to last for whenever those consoles get announced. Because I don't, I, I just want the chance, like people in America, to to let. Let Sony know I want the chance to pre-order this thing. <laughs> where, where is it? Anyway. Come on, they're not going to give you any information ever until the date comes out. And even then they want to announce the price. You'll just have to reach into a mystery box and pull a yeah. price out. And that's what you're paying. You just put your card in there and then they beep it. <laughs> and then it, you have to find out later. That's what's what? going to happen though, isn't it? That's what everyone is going to do. Like, and everyone will be fine with that because everyone's yeah. already ready for it to happen. We're ready yeah. for it. So just, you know, just take the money, please have it. It's yours. Like... We're just lucky the banks don't sleep until Christmas now. Anyway, moving on. Uh, WWE 2K Battlegrounds. Okay, no, that is the excitement there. Uh, I mean, Math- Mafia Definitive Edition is coming out shortly after that. I don't know if any of you want to send any more on Mafia Definitive Edition. Are any of you excited, especially after the trash fire, which was a few, was it a few months ago now with Mafia 2? Yes, it was a few months ago. That, that sucked, man. Like, that is a game that I like, rage quitted and uninstalled because I bought it. So looking forward to it. I was a big fan of Mafia 2, and I found out that the game itself doesn't actually hold up that well. And also, the port sucked because there was glitches and bugs and crashes all over it. So it did not make me happy 
or enthusiastic for Mafia Definitive Edition, but it's been made by a different team. It seems like it's had a lot more work put into it, and I do like the look of it. I'm just, after they drop Mafia 2 and Mafia 3, um, the supposed Definitive Editions, uh, my excitement has gone down a little bit, and now, like a lot of the games we're going to talk about, I'm more curious about than I am properly pumped for it, because I do think they could do it well, but if they're going to do it well, I don't know. I, I feel like it's emblematic of another thing that kind of the rest of this year feels like there's lots of games coming that are like, oh, there's some games coming, but none of them are like, ah, oh, there's like, usually at this point, I feel like there's still like some big, big heavy hitters, but I feel like there are some big heavy hitters, but not quite as many as normal, obviously, because of the city world situation yeah. and that sort of thing. And this one feels like another one where I'm like, yeah, that, that's great. I'm glad that's happening, but there's been issues and we'll see how it goes. Like, it's just like all of them so far are kind of like, yes, I'm glad that we're getting some games, but where's the ones that are making me go, hell yeah, get me on that console, pressing buttons, brother. Oh, well, I feel like we're going to get you pressing some buttons just next with Crash Bandicoot 4. It's about time. I think we're, all three of us said we were interested in this. Yeah, yeah. This, is, this is where you're talking the good stuff, Ben. This is yeah. where it starts I, to get I, I had to eke it out a bit and I just had to like, you know, get, get, some of in, get some in there, but yeah. Crash 4, I love the fact that they're just ignoring the rest of the timeline. Like, I mean, this is, never works for films, really, but it's going to probably work here, so I'm happy about it. Getting all everyone back in, I'm not even, I don't know about you two, but I'm not even angry about the sort of the new models, the new looks of the characters either. I, I'm kind of ready for just a new Crash classic experience, but in this new world, what about you two? Yeah, I think after having the, uh, obviously the repackaged crashes recently, having a fresh brand new one. I know Josh is going to be absolutely like just dropping tears everywhere going, oh, crash, my boy. So like, I'm glad, I'm, I'm very glad that the crash is coming back because it is about time. It is about time for a new one and uh, that we get crash four, which is such a weird number for yeah. it, considering there have been yeah. so many other crash games in between. They're all dead. Yeah, oh, well, it feels nice that this is like a revitalization of the franchise and that Crash is becoming like a PlayStation, well, not becoming, but you know, is being reinforced as a PlayStation mascot and people are going, hell yeah, we all love Crash growing up, now he's back, what a king, put the crown upon him, it's wonderful. <laughs> like, I'm just glad that he's back and it looks really good and it has that same sort of vibes, like it's about time, has the same vibes as the... Um, and got the same excitement in me as the Ratchet and Clank, the new Ratchet and Clank as well, yeah, um, yeah. A Rift Apart. I feel like they've got the uh, the same vibes to them and I'm really excited to see what a Rift Apart does. Though I know Crash Bandicoot will probably be a little bit behind that because the, the Ratchet and Clank one is very much pushing next gen experience and Crash Bandicoot is just like, hey, I'm back guys, let's have a nice time. <laughs> I, I love that vibe. I love like just like like you said, it's sort of like taking what worked from like a nostalgic perspective about the Insane Trilogy whilst making steps in like a new direction but not in a total overhaul way like crash mind over mutant was which was just like absolutely terrible for me you know what I'm, I'm looking forward to it i think from the gameplay we've seen so far i think they've probably nailed that classic platforming feel but like on a grander stage with a few more bells and whistles i like that you can change around the characters i like that you've got this you know like the, the time element comes through in the gameplay what i don't like is them erasing my boy the wrath of cortex because that is good Crash Cannon should include the real Crash 4, the Wrath of Cortex, and also Crash Twin Sanity was all right. Don't just erase things from history because it's convenient, you know what I mean? Live Ow. with your mistakes. Don't Ow, pretend Ow. Batman and Robin doesn't exist. Live with it. Live with it. Build upon it. Do Batman something. and Robin? Don't just... Up there? Part of the Batman experience, I right? Exactly, it's like, man. It's like the Halloween films coming around, doing like Halloween 2018 and skipping everything out in the middle. It's like, ooh, that's okay, but there's a lot of, there's a lot of history there. How about exactly this? Exactly. Dingo Dial, playable character. He is retired from being a bad lad and now he's getting involved. <laughs> Get in, Dingo Dial. I'm just going to say now, Dingo Dial, better than anything Jack and Daxter has ever done. Just a short <laughs> uh, Now we're going to segue on to Star Wars Squadrons. Any of you too excited about this? You can keep it quick. We don't have to talk about this because it's really just a space shooting game, which could be good. Yes, mate. It's, it's on VR, so it's going to be good. You know what I mean? Like, one of my favorite VR experiences was the, um, was like the cockpit level. I think it was Rogue One that you got free with the original Star Wars Battlefront. And to have a whole game based, like, off that, you know, like, exploded multiplayer, that tickles my fancy, that. <laughs> no, like, what are you going to say ooh, there, Trent? Tickles? <laughs> not very nice. Uh, and I'm, I'm looking forward to it, you know what I mean? Like, I didn't think, I'm, I'm not usually into the Star Wars and, um, like, dogfighting stuff, but put that thing in VR, and it's my favourite thing in the world. 
I'm sick of Star Wars at this point. I'm <laughs> sick of it. I'm sick to my gullet of Star Wars. I hate seeing it branded anywhere. I see the Star Wars name and I go, another? Another? Really? You're going to continue with this? You're going to continue pushing this? I'm like, yes, there are gems out there. There are wonderful, lovely Star Wars gems, both in the films and in the games. But at this point, there's just too much of it. I'm oversaturated. I'm like drowning in lightsaber fluid, crystals, whatever makes them up. I don't care anymore. Get away from me is what I say. Like, um, go good, great, have your VR dog fight in, but also just call it like star battle or, you know, other thing beginning with star and I'd be interested, you know, star yeah, fighters, yeah. star yeah. battles, star, I guess Star Wars is probably the best description, yeah. but <laughs> still. Why don't you, why don't you ask, why, why, why don't you, right? Go out tonight or go online, order a PlayStation VR, drop a couple hundred bucks on this baby and then get excited for it. Like, play the demo, no, play the little Battlefront no. thing. Get it away then, from me. More then, then Star, Wars. Star Wars. The world does not need more Star Wars. It needs more <laughs> new IP that we're having fun with, not more Star Wars. Star Wars How about we um, cancel all the comic stuff before we cancel the Star Wars stuff? Oh, shoot it again, ba-bam. But <laughs> it's going to have Ray Sloan in it. She's a great character from the books, which these new rebooted books are actually a great part of the Star Wars canon. Like, this is how I survive and don't cry in the corner after what has happened with some of the more recent films is the books are brilliant and they're going to have one of the best characters from the books in there so that is why I'm now kind of excited and it's going to be a discount price £40 I think they say over here $40 Ooh. in America maybe maybe $100 who knows and uh, there's also going to be FIFA 21 big soccer FIFA 21 that's coming out uh, then Good. next, we're going to have the, the true breakup story of Troy Baker and Nolan North with Dirt 5, which will be out <laughs> in October. And hopefully we get to see the real reason that um, two, of our, two of our favorite voice actors in the industry just don't talk to each other anymore. Ben Roy, I don't know what anything you just said means, but I'm very sad about it. <laughs> I'm interested. You've got me hooked on. I didn't think I was interested in Dirt 5. Now I am. Yeah, like, I'm but, like, what, what is this but, story? Well, what is they, this tale? they did a little YouTube channel together, didn't I? I say little, it was pretty good. And then their marketing was, it's Troy Baker and Null North in Dirt 5 doing some VO. Ah. And then they had this thing where they don't talk anymore. And now the marketing has just changed to one of them speaking because mm. they don't oh. do things together anymore. Sure. Uh, moving on to a game that I saw Josh Brown is interested in, uh, Watch Dogs Legion. Well, right, okay, I've talked a lot. I don't want to repeat myself about this morbid curiosity that I have for all of these games, but this is the ultimate one, like, because I, I really enjoyed Watch Dogs for what it was. It was disappointing. It was undeniably a disappointment, but I do think there's something in the core concept. The game itself was all right. It was like a nice 7 out of 10, and I really like Watch Dogs 2 in the way they kind of dropped a lot of the gritty seriousness of the first and embraced this kind of more comedic edge, even if the comedy might not necessarily been for me. I thought it was a better kind of um, sandbox for the uh, franchise as a whole to play in. And I thought, um, you know, it made a lot of cool developments on the core hacking and core combat. And it made it so that you didn't have to shoot anyone, essentially. You could play the whole thing, like, non-lethally and using all of the different electronics available. So when it came, comes to Watch Dogs 3, I have that inbuilt excitement. And it just looks so odd. It looks so strange because I love the concept of being able to be anyone, you know, be the old lady on the street, be, be the guy in the street, be this construction worker, be this office worker, be this John Wick style dude. Um, but at the same time, I feel like the aesthetic of it is, is classic kind of modern day, big blockbuster game. It's got this like, it's revolutionary edge, you know, they've said it's like set in a post Brexit London, but at the same time, they're desperately trying so hard to not be political. And I'm just like, how would you have this setting? All of us just cringe there, like, whoa. <laughs> it's like, how would you have yeah. this setting? How would you have this story, revolutionary story, but then also try so hard to not be political? It's like that classic thing of no game wants to admit it, but then if you don't want to do it, stop picking these settings that are like inherently political. And I want to see how that kind of like plays out and how these kind of contrasts and these juxtapositions like class with each, with each other. Because it's clear there's like a vision there. But I want to see how this kind of like vision, like whether or not it succeeds against the big machinations of, you know, big budget AAA video game development, which, you know, tries to, especially in Ubisoft's case, tries to like homogenize everything and make everything kind of so 
standardized and I hope that's not happened and I hope the creativity does flourish through and I'm, I really hope the delay because this was supposed to come out at the start of the year is, is like worth it and we get something genuinely good out of it because I wonder if this isn't a success whether Watch Dogs will just go away because I feel like it's had two attempts going into the third that were okay but it never quite lived up to its potential and I'm just here waiting and hoping that it will eventually you know live up to its hype it's one of those bigger ones that kind of floats under the surface, I think, that like, oh, okay, yeah, it's coming, but like, hmm, interesting, like, is it, I don't know, I haven't felt like updated on it in a while, or like, you know, thrilled about it. Um, it's the one with all, it's got those bit mad NPC action in it, hasn't it, Watch Dogs Legion, although we're going to try and like make everything so everyone was accessible or talkable to, it's supposed to be yeah. mad in scope. Everyone playable actually can like yeah, really recruit that's anyone it. in, and it's like I don't know how that's gonna work because you can have like these cool different archetypes, you know what I mean? But I wonder how often they they repeat. I wonder if there's any kind of real, yeah. you know, differences in it apart from like twenty archetypes or something like that. I don't know, but I'm it's a, it's vicious, and <laughs> I am skeptical. Very, very I skeptical. See how it turns. AF, as the kids say, because. It feels like you're not going to be playing a character at all because the whole fact that you're going to be like 17 different... You can keep getting arrested and put in prison or I think killed. So I just don't know how they're going to write this. Like th that, mm. That's the thing I need to see before I jump in. Uh, and I, I, I took a break from the second one and I, I noticed it went in steps that you can, as you said, Josh, not shoot anyone, which is refreshing for a video game to go down the more passive route. But I feel like that game especially after Ghost Recon like soured some of the water needs to uh, it needs to sort of revive the part of the along with Valhalla which we get to a minute revive the Ubisoft stake in the industry I feel like but uh, just jumping over Just Dance 2021 because I'm sure we're all going to play that anyway to more political and video games more politics uh, Call of Duty Black Ops Cold War mm. Yeah, right. I'm, I'm gonna have to just repeat everything I've just said. This thing might be a trash <laughs> fire, like Call of Duty, the, the Black Ops Cold War. Like we've ha heard for like the past year that everything internally went wrong. You know what I mean? Like uh, it wasn't supposed to be a new Black Ops game until next year, but then the developers who were working on this year's Call of Duty essentially fell out. They weren't making something good, so Activision hit the panic button, called in the Black Ops team to essentially push this thing out. And it's just if there's any year that we didn't need a new Call of Duty, it's like right now not only because mm. of everything that's going on where they could excusably you know push it but like war zones going strong modern warfare's mm. doing well like we still got updates for that we still there's still like millions of people playing that game so they don't necessarily need a new black ops but that said i think the trailer looked pretty decent i just i, I don't know it's it feels like another call of duty you know what i mean like yeah. i know yeah. a lot of call of duties feel like that but this one more than anything else to me um just feels like another Call of Duty. And I know there are old pe people out there who like, are looking forward to it. I know there's a lot of people who don't like Modern Warfare and the changes it made. Wow, I almost teared up at the idea <laughs> of people not liking Modern Warfare. Uh, and people are looking forward to Black Ops to return, but I don't know, man. I feel like this whole thing could have used another a year in the oven or another six months or just you know something because it only just got announced it's coming out in uh, November. It's like a, such a quick turnaround and... Again, I am, I am cautiously optimistic, I, but expecting the worst. I feel like the way that this has all rolled out, the thing that it only just got announced, is it was probably going to be day and date both versions for like uh, the PlayStation 4, the PS5, yeah. the Xbox Series X. But I, part of me feels like those consoles might even not come out this year. So that's why they're getting ahead and going, Bobby's like, pull the button, release them now, <laughs> release the hounds. But um, I'm so looking forward to this one more because... I, am, I used to be a mad nerd in school for the Cold War history and like Russian history and like from, from like the whole of last century from the rise and fall of the Soviet Union, just that, all that sort of I mean, shit. Like I get really interested in all those little grimy little details. So I'm interested to see how they handle it here. And it's skeptical, but I, at the same time, this is the most interested in a, in a Call of Duty I might have been for for a long time now. I, nothing apart from this has really grabbed me until they become free on PS Plus or anything. I just, I'm not sure. Do you have any more thoughts on Call of Duty Black Ops, Ash? 
I think you guys have said everything there is possible to say on Call of Duty Black Ops, to be fair. Like, I think it's one of those ones for me, it comes around like FIFA, there's card and FIFA every year, and I'm like, cool. Like, that's, that's, I'm re like, good, they're here. Um, they're, they're, they're always there, they're that, like, presence. And I know they're doing innovative and exciting things, especially with um, the Call of Duty stuff. And I think the trailer does look incredible with the, the, the themes they're going for, how they're doing it, and kind of the upgrades they've added to everything. Um, but I would just, again, as with everything, I'm just interested to see how that logically plays out when it does actually release. That's all I can really say about it. It's not, no fun com colour commentary here, just, oh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I'm interested. I will just hit the, um, the two that we, some of the ones we don't have dates for. Uh, Mars Morales, that's obviously due to come out this year, if the PS5 is even real. And Bug Snacks. I mean, yes. that, that, that hellfire of an experience. I love bug snacks. I'm so excited <laughs> to see bug snacks. I'm glad you brought it up because bug yeah. snacks looks like the most interesting game of them all. Bugs, snacks, together, bug snacks. Like, I just, the name has stuck with me ever since that showcase. I just want to see bug snacks. I want to play bug snacks. I want to know what's going on with bug snacks. I need an update on bug snacks. And I, again, I have nothing to offer about this game. I'm just excited for bug snacks. This is the most animated I've been this whole podcast. Bug snacks. <laughs> I want to see the bug snacks fight the Pikmin and see what who wins in the end. Yeah. Uh, the, 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 just the two last ones that are really, you know, the, the small games that are, actually have release dates, uh, both coming out within a few days of each other. Assassin's Creed Valhalla and Cyberpunk 2077. Rather yeah, yeah. than them in together because we're running a bit long, so I'm going to give either of you a choice to pick which one of them you want to talk about. Oh. Actually, oh my god! Come on. It's, it's like that, I was I was once told about like writing exercises when you're doing writing um, that when you get to a point you have to go back and edit yourself. It's called killing your kittens, and I hated that phrase so much. And that this is what you've done to me here. You've asked me to kill my kittens because I'm excited to for both of them. Um, Talk about think, both of them if you want, and then just you know finish the show. Well, oh no, <laughs> I'm not going to take that away from Joe. I'm very excited for Cyber Episode Seven. I don't think I can offer anything new that i haven't said a million times in news podcasts talking heads like there's loads of, there's loads to be excited for with cyberpunk that it is so big that it's come from cd project red that it's had so much work funneled into it night city i just want to live there it looks incredible and i think valhalla continuing this trend of like norse mythology based games um, that have kind of come out in recent years has a lot to kind of dig into that would be interesting it's the first assassin's creed title in a while that's maybe go oh, I'm really interested to see the setting of this and go into this. Not to say the other ones haven't been good, because I don't, I don't think they haven't been good at all. As in, I agree that they are good, but the Valhalla yeah. setting, I think, is uh, the one that has caught my attention the most. And I do think it is a trend in video games that we're getting more of the Norse mythology stuff, um, especially in the wake of God of War and all that sort of thing as well, and Hellblade. Um, but yeah, I'm just uh, that sort of mythology dig in and with this sort of Assassin's Creed setting, I'm interested. I'm invested. I'm glad I get this whole, the history, the past with Assassin's Creed and the future with Cyberpunk 2077. And I, that within a couple of days of each other, I don't know how I'm going to spread my time is the truth. I have no idea how I'm going to do this. I cannot do one yeah. in three days before the other one comes out. So this is awful timing, to be honest. Which kitten will you kill? And which one will you play first? I want to, I, I want a hard answer now. Which kitten are you going to kill? Which one are you going to play, Ash? Oh, well, I'm, I'm definitely, definitely going to play Cyberpunk 2077. If I had to pick between the two, that would be the one. But you hear it here, Ash Millman has killed Assassin's Creed. Josh, any thoughts on these two <laughs> games before we round it up? Um, just echoing every, every single thing Ash said there, to be honest. Like, Cyberpunk 2077 is the one for me. Like, I feel like it's everyone's, or like, in the gaming world at large, it's like the thing they're looking forward to the most this year. And I hope it lives up to all of the years of expectations. I went back through The Witcher 3 um, mm. earlier this year, uh, and that more or less held up perfectly. It was even better than the first time I played it. So I've got, you know, huge, huge hopes for this to be something interesting, something unique, something I can spend a lot of time in. And like Ash said, just lose myself in Night City. Um, Assassin's Creed, on the other hand, is something I'm interested in. But it's something that I get excited for when I read about it, but get mm. less excited for when I see it in action. Because on paper... They're making a lot of great strides to make this a more interesting game overall. You know what I mean? They're moving away from a lot of the stuff that I didn't like about Odyssey, like the leveling system, the gear system, the way you finally have like this home base that encourages you to return to places rather than just skip through the open world. That said, every single time I see it in action, it just looks like Assassin's Creed again, which for a lot of people might be fine, but I had my fill of Odyssey and now I feel like I want 
in evolution and obviously you know it's hard to um completely overlook everything that's been happening with ubisoft all of those like horrific allegations all of the creative directors lead leaving and the impact that that's had on the game's actual development because even you know excluding that from the, the the morals of everything wrong that's gone on in that company like it has impacted the game development across the board and resulted in these games that are like i was saying earlier more homogenous more creatively stifled more similar to the ubisoft formula or whatever and i'm just hoping this game and watchdogs can like break away from that and do something interesting because like ash said there's such a great base there there's such a great kind of like setting and a great uh kind of like approach that the developers are taking to the systems like i just mentioned i just want that to properly shine through and not get stifled stifled by all of the assassin's creed baggage i guess i've been very negative on this whole podcast i feel like i don't want to be you know what i mean i, I was, thought, you're I was burning with knowledge. like you're burning with knowledge Josh. <laughs> that's what it is you know everything so you're like everything will disappoint me <laughs> <laughs> well i'll be more negative for me i'm not going to touch Assassin's Creed most probably because I say like I I'll echo what you said you look at them they look for the same and I don't necessarily want the big sort of open world or you can eat dinner right now on my plate like I, I'm more here for Cyberpunk and their themes a bit like just like looking at that game makes me so goddamn interested and then finally finishing The Witch 3 this year after all these years after playing it and getting annoyed and not touching it for about five <laughs> years <laughs> legit and then going back in and realizing what I'd missed and what CD Projekt Red can do I am so hyped for this game now I cannot wait and I'm just, I can, it's tearing on the edge of this year. I just, I just, I just pray to the video games that this comes out at least, that it someone, doesn't miss its date. Someone trolled me on Twitter um, a few weeks ago that I forgot to like, but I have to give huge props. It was, um, I think he, I think they tweeted me and Scott and it was like the cyberpunk kind of like message thing, you know, when it's usually delayed. Yeah. And, it, and the message was like, oh my God, I can't believe this has been delayed again. And then all the text was the lyrics to uh, the Rick Roll song, the Rick Astley song. And I was yeah. like, oh, brilliant. I've just been absolutely, uh, you know, stitched up there. So I hope it doesn't get delayed, but I've already, I've already kind of grieved it within that yeah. joke. So you know, we'll see. I'm steeled. I think the worst thing about that game I can think about is I think of Night City and then the lyrics to Rack City are in my head. And that's yeah. just that's just something that is cursed with me for now. And one last thing, Who's Your Daddy comes out on the 23rd of December. Don't know what that is, but I'm could be brilliant. Uh, this Christmas. was the What Culture Game podcast. And we have, I think we've run down every major game that is coming out for the rest of the year. It, we didn't, it didn't feel like much reading this list off before the podcast, but now it feels like a lot, to be fair. Yeah. And I just, video games are still happening. And thank God that they are happening where films are all much all but gone to sleep like the banks. Uh, I have been Ben Roy Turner. I've been Josh by Josh. Josh by? I've been joined Josh by, by Josh. Josh Brown. You can follow Josh on Twitter at Josh Brun with two O's. I've also been Joshed by Ash, and you can follow her on Twitter at at Ash Millman. And you can follow me on Twitter at Ben Roy Turner. You can follow all of us at it's WC Culture Gaming. W Culture Gaming. I... Don't know, but if you type it into Twitter, you'll probably find it. If you type What Culture Game in Twitter into Google, then you will find it. <laughs> anyway, uh, that is the show for us today. Hope you've had a good bank holiday if you've been over here, and now it's all time for us to go back to sleep. Like good the night. banks. Like the banks. Bye. Bye. Bye.